From the John DeVita Broadcast Center, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Armchair Experts with Jim Leanne and Rich Massaro on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network and Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich on Wednesday, January the 11th, the year 2017. And now, here they are, still breathing on their own like last year, Jim and Rich. Just a few days older. I always check the sign when we come down here now just to make sure we're the armchair experts and not the arm hair experts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, somebody, always uh, always try to make somebody sure. Somebody like that. Somebody like that one. Everybody behave over the holidays other than uh, Davida getting into a fight in a bar. Yeah. And apparently losing <sighs> from the looks of him. Every, everybody else behave? Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything was good. Everything quiet. Was quiet. Quiet. Yeah. Quiet night. Holy night. Same with us. We were uh, we were uh, quiet, very quiet. I have a question Bo- for you. Bore, bored, boring. I have a question for you. Yeah. Last night before the national championship game uh, ended, I went to bed. It was at the fourth quarter. Alabama was still winning. I missed a hell of a fourth but quarter. When I <laughs> went to bed. Uh, and I, this, my question is this: Do you get uh, as you get older? Do you get these feelings, and do they? Pa- how often do they pan out? I yeah, was pretty because, sure that when I woke because up, because I'm what that two, I weeks, would two hear, weeks older than you, that I would hear <laughs> that Clemson was the new national champion. Because mm-hmm. Al- uh, as I say, Alabama was still ahead, but it was. I I thought this is going to be Clemson's ball game. What What made you think that? I just thought they were out playing them. I thought that at uh, after uh, Alabama took uh, the the quick fourteen zip lead, the next time I looked, it was seventeen seven Alabama, and from that point on, Alabama was or uh, Clemson had basically uh, other than one play that I saw, one big play that uh, Alabama made from Hurts uh, to Howard, uh, the touchdown pass, the long touchdown mm-hmm. pass. Clemson had them totally uh, figured out, and they were ready. To, you know, and they were moving the football outstanding. They were moving. The, they were moving the football very well. I thought it was kind of interesting, and I was watching it last night too. And um, when I just was driving over here, I was in the neighborhood. I stayed last night and watched the game. Watched the second half of the game, but I had gone over before I came here. I went over to McDonald's in the plaza. And uh, Matt Bone was on the radio on the score. And Matt Bone's a great analyst, football analyst, and he's a great one to look at technique. And he said he thought, looking at Alabama, especially on defense, he said they were tired and the tackling started to get sloppy. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, he said that's usually when things start to break down. Now, let me ask you this. A lot of uh, a lot was made over the past week, uh, the fact that uh, Saban uh, totally uh, separated the team from Lane Kiffin, and Sarkeesian, Steve Sarkeesian stepped in. Uh, what effect do you think yeah, that had on the ball? That, I don't know, although uh, Saban said he was pleased with what Sarkeesian did. Sarkeesian yeah. was going to be the... It was going to be the... the OC next year, anyhow. Yeah. I actually, from what I saw, uh, what I saw, I thought it had a huge effect. Really? Uh, yeah. I I just don't. Uh, I, you know, I'm. How could I? How could I say this? Uh, not that uh, I'm not criticizing Sarkeesian about anything he did specifically. But at least he's, I, I at least thought. He's, at least he's sober. Now. That Clemson. <laughs> Had the 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 whole thing figured out? It may uh, have. It may have been a very predictable. Yeah, and I, it, I, I it don't may think have been you a got very that. What, whether offense. you like Kiffin or not, I'll tell you what. Uh, he did an excellent job with the uh, Alabama offense while he was there. Yeah, and, I thought uh, so too. You know, I, I thought so too. I, I just, I did, I do think it had an effect on the game. It, 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 it was interesting too because the con- one of the conversation items that I heard on there was. Well, you know what? It's a different voice you're hearing. Yeah. It it may be the you know the schemes were fine, the, everything else was fine. It might be just that one little thing. Uh, 
just curious as to what the numbers looked like last night uh, for uh, uh, Alabama on offense. Well, up as in, as as compared to uh, 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 Alabama was out rushing Clemson. Clemson was out passing them big time. Uh, the big uh, the big margin uh, early on was turnovers. Clemson had a couple that Alabama cashed in on, but uh, I don't know what the final numbers were because if, uh, as you say, the fourth quarter was a wild one. Fourth quarter was change. a fourth quarter was a wild quarter. Um, okay. Oh man, it was rather. Clemson outgained Alabama 511 yards to 376 yards. Yeah. Uh, passing 420 to 155. Yeah. Uh, however, Alabama, with their rushing game, 221 and 91. Um, Alabama didn't turn the ball over, but Clemson turned the ball over twice. Yeah. Yeah. It. Uh, yeah. No, I, I, I Here, here's just... here's another here's another key. Third down efficiency. Cle- uh, Clemson seven of eighteen, Alabama two of fifteen. Yeah, no, I mean they just didn't move the ball at all. No, from what I saw. Mm-mm. And when Scarborough, uh, was it Scarborough, went out, uh, they oh, did you see the one play, Jim? I I only saw this. I only saw the second half. No. Okay, in the second half, the, uh, there was a play, <laughs> and it was going to be a, a probably a big gainer for Alabama. It was a screen pass, and somehow Howard. And the running back at the time was not Scarborough; it was the other Harris. Yeah, were uh, let's say five, maybe ten yards from each other. They were in the same area. And what I thought of, it was such an interesting play because uh, Hertz was throwing the screen was for Harris. Okay, but Howard looked up, and the ball was just over his head. And you're thinking, because you're watching, obviously, from a, a you know great angle, not Howard's angle, which is not that great, obviously. Mm-hmm. And you're thinking, oh, man, this ball gets to Harris. He's going right down that sideline, and there ain't nobody going to stop him. It's going to be a TD. Yeah. Well, Howard, with his back turned to Harris, does not know this. All he knows is that the ball is near him. He doesn't know, basically, who's behind him. You're not going to let that ball go. Okay, you it, you know you don't want it intercepted. You don't. Right. Want, so he grabs the ball, gained a couple yards, end up short of the first down, and the uh, commentators uh, mentioned it at the time. But had he let the ball go, which and I'm, I'm and I'm not knocking him because that's your instinct. You don't know what's going to happen with this ball. You you have to catch it because you you can't just let it go, not knowing ba- basically who's behind you. Right. Uh, but had he let it go, that was that play was going to the house. Yeah, and uh, it would have been a key play because at that point it would have put. Uh, I think Alabama would have ended up being up at that point by three scores, two touchdowns, and a field goal, which might have changed the whole ball game because now your defense is is going to defend differently mm-hmm. than with a than with a three mm-hmm. or a seven point lead or whatever mm-hmm. they had at that that point in time. Mm-hmm. So some interesting things. I uh, overall though, I I thought it was a good game, but nothing great. It was a good game. It was entertaining. Yeah. From um, now, I, I as I said, I, I saw the second half. A friend of mine and I uh, got together for uh, uh, dinner last night at uh, Sabatino's. On, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. You know, Irving. On Irving. So we missed the first half, and uh, he didn't want to go to the bar to watch the second half. So well, I went good home. Lucky for you. I went home. To- <laughs> I think I think we're older now. We just yeah, uh, we'll just go home. Cocktail before dinner. I'll cocktail the, with uh, dinner, and we're out of here. I'll go home. I'll get the uh, the the blanket to put over myself as I watch in the easy chair. That's and, right. Uh, That's know. right. Yeah, we we had uh, uh, we keep remembering a time when we were at uh, um, we were at a place over on uh, Damon and uh, Lawrence a number of years ago. We used to meet there and watch the NCAA basketball title, the, the championship game. And we're leaving. We're leaving right before, right at the end of the game, and we're going. And Mike looks at me and he goes, "Eleven o'clock. We're still relatively sober. This is a good night." 
door opens and somebody comes, guy walks in and looks and goes. That's always the bad looks thing. And, looks and goes, Sahida! Yeah. <laughs> and I just hear Mike go, oh, we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and that was the night, you know, he bought shots, he round of shots. Of course. Mike bought hey. a round of shots. When that right guy comes walking the in. Guy, the guy across uh, the bar from us who won 100 bucks on the board, he bought shots. Of course. Ray, the owner, bought shots, and it was a different color than what was everything else was being poured that night. Ooh, that's a bad sign. And as I brought the shot glass up and I paused for a moment, I hear Ray growl, don't sniff it, drink it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> hey, and honestly, the rest of the night was <laughs> some. You know, you were asking about the the uh, the holidays, Christmas and New Year's. Now, something did happen really interesting. I over the holiday couple weeks, and it involved our, our buddy Jimmy Sunshine. Uh oh, good, bad. Uh, uh, so good and bad, I guess. <laughs> Funny as as could be. Uh, when you think about it, but here, here's the deal, uh, and just to prep everybody or whoever's listening, Jimmy Sunshine, now, if, if something happens to Jim or I physically, I, I just had a bout with the gout in my hand. Now, Which Jim you... if Jim would have seen that, he would have been all over my case. You haven't gone to the doctor? You, you don't have any medicine? I mean, he would have been, oh, my God. what? What's wrong with you? You, you, you? you know, Rich, the problem with you is, you don't want to know, and uh, my and my re uh, reply is you're you're damn right. I don't want to know. So, uh, but at any rate, that was Davida when he didn't want to go to the hospital after he f fell after off he the fell. ladder. Fell off the ladder. So, so at, sister at, wanted to take you to the hospital. At any rate, yeah, the big day dope. after, uh, let's see, was New Year's Eve a Sunday? Sunday? Uh, yeah. Was January no, 1st Sunday? Uh, January, New Year's Day was Sunday. Was New Year's Day. Okay, New Year's Day was Sunday. So the library was closed the next day. So I went over to Fanny's on Montrose in Milwaukee. I walk in, and Stephanie says to me, Rich, she goes, uh, have you heard anything about Jim? Uh, meaning Matthews. And I'm like, Jimmy Sunshine. Jimmy Jim Sunshine. And I'm like, no, why? She said, have you seen him? I said, I started to think. I go, well, I, I have seen him, but, I mean, it was maybe five, six days ago. She goes, well, um, Ella from the library, I guess, got a hold of them and said Jim had passed out and fell and knocked out his two front teeth. And I said, geez, man, one Jeez. Day, okay, well, then I haven't seen Jim since Jeez. that happened. So I go, but, you know, now I'm curious. So I called Jim from Fanny's. And he answers, and I said, hey, what's going on here? I heard you, you know. Uh, he gives me the old, you know, what do you mean, what's going on? I, I go, okay, you're going to play this game now, all right? So uh, I said, you know, I heard you had an accident. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, 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 that. So it ends up, to make a longer story, a longer, long story, long story a little shorter. A long anyway. story even longer. Yeah, he <laughs> Now, Jim tells me, he says, well, he says, yeah, he says, I, I passed out like uh, four days in a row. And finally, the last day, I, you know, I fell and hit my head uh, or hit my face on whatever and knocked my two front teeth out. I said, Jim, I, you know, I'm sorry this happened to you, but do you realize what you're saying here? He goes, what do you mean? I said, if any of us had passed out once, okay, and mentioned it to you, you would have been all over our case. I go, so I'm officially all over your case. That's right. Right. You go I to mean, the doctor? Who, what a doctor. Yeah. Jim, and here I'm saying this to you. If I passed out once, I'd say, well, you know what? Anybody could pass out. You know, and who That's knows happened. what makes you pass out. That's happened. Stand but you know what? Quick. Once it happened like twice, and the twice is two days in a row. Yeah. Then I don't care how much I hate the doctor. I'm at the doctor's, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And if I passed out four days in a row, I'm like, you know, uh, so, you know, I guess the message to Jim, Jimmy Sunshine is, you know, take your own advice, buddy. There you go. You know, you're always you the, go. you're always the doctor for everybody there else. You, you know, go. well, Jeez. you know, it's not doctor heal thyself. It's, no. uh, you know, go to the darn doctor. Well, yeah, I know. I'm, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, uh, I started with a, um, 
virus and coughing and sore throat and congestion like just before New Year's. And it kept getting, you know, kept getting worse. And, uh, you know, I'm doing the usual mucinex and the usual over-the-counter stuff. And and uh, um, I, I started to, since I was so congested, I started to use the Breathe Right strips. Oh, yeah. Again. Yeah. And uh, our our mattress, I can raise my side, so I had my side up a little bit, so I'd get this. But apparently, my my snoring was just a little bit too much. All for your wife. Huh? For my wife, and I do vaguely remember uh, at one point in time about four a.m. <laughs> being shaken and hearing her going, "You're going to the doctor tomorrow." <laughs> I'm calling for an appointment. You're going to the doctor. <laughs> oh God! Well, Jim, let's uh, you know, let's try to veer back on course here. Since this is a sports <laughs> talk since, show, since we've talked about all our uh, infirmities and everything uh, else, you uh, with your gout, me with my, uh, me with the virus that I think I'm about ninety eight percent done with. That's good. That's good. Ninety eight percent done with, and we, we, it was a good ball game, and it was nice. It was a good ball game. Going back to the national championship game, yeah, it was a good ball game compared to the 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 uh, the, the garbage that was wild uh, wild card weekend uh, in the NFL. There wasn't exactly very much in the way of compelling games, other than maybe what a quarter and a half of the Packers uh, game. Yeah, I, you know, the only <laughs> game I got a chance to see a little bit of was unfortunately because i thought it was a, a bad game uh was houston and oakland and yeah uh, i saw i saw part of that you know houston struggles <coughs> excuse me offensively anyway and oakland would have been entertaining and and i i'm thinking oakland probably would win this game but you're down to your third string quarterback and that was just not working yeah and apparently del rio got talked about talked in talked out of changing quarterbacks Wow, who talked them have, out of that? I have no idea. Wow, but uh, I guess uh, what's what's the other guy? McGloin. McGloin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were gonna they were gonna go with him, and uh, from what I saw, uh, we had gone uh, uh, we'd gone to church on Saturday night and came out and went to dinner, and I saw part of the end of the game, and the little bit I saw of Connor Cook, he was lost. He looked lost out there. You know, the unfortunate thing about that type of situation for a guy like Connor Cook is, you you know, obviously you're a competitor, you're an athlete, which is, you know, Connor Cook is. So you're you're not going to back away from that situation, no, even no. though you've only had uh, part of one game's experience as an NFL yeah. quarterback. In a week working with the first team. Yeah. Uh, so y- you find yourself in a, and un- it's unfortunate because, you know, of course you're going to answer the bell. This sure. is an opportunity. You're a professional. But he's, uh, you know, he's not prepared for it. And I think the unfortunate thing that happens because of the way our society, I'd say, is set up today is this, hopefully this won't, this one performance is not going to paint his whole career. And, but it has the it always has it the has potential. The, it has the potential of it, and and I think even more so from the fact that uh, uh, Cook has the reputation of first of all, he's he's not he, he kind of got the reputation at Michigan State of being a good quarterback, but not considered a team leader because he was never named a captain. Oh, okay. Uh, the other issue too is apparently he has got the world's worst little league dad. Oh, okay. Which I wasn't, which I was never aware of. Mm-hmm. Uh, but apparently that's that's also another issue. Okay, well, that could be an issue for sure. <laughs> that could be an issue here uh, because if you're going to look at him, I have no idea what his contract situation is in Oakland. He was a fourth round draft pick. Wouldn't surprise me if it was one year with maybe an option. Well, as Roger Campshire, our former uh, Ridgewood superintendent, would would like to say, I, I'd hate to see the baby thrown out with the bathwater. Though, right, right, right. Uh, I I just think that uh, you know I I and I'll go you know and, and I, I'm get off of this subject uh, real quick. But my feeling is always any of these guys because they have uh, NFL caliber talent. I mean, there's there's gradations of it. There's no question. Sure. 
any of these guys can make it in the, the right situation, I believe. So so to just say, well, this guy, you know, what's he doing as an NFL quarterback, Is uh, I, I don't like to hear that type of talk, no matter who it is. So, Well, then I won't bring up Barkley because I think the Barkley as an NFL quarterback talk may have ended after the last two games. I, I don't see it that way. To me, well, I, well, I've I always, s- uh, you know, Mark Bruno, who's a friend of mine yeah. uh, and was a quarterback uh, through high school and sure, college. Sure. You know, we, we've talked about this a little bit. And uh, when we coached the Junior Rebels, this is the, uh, the the second edition of the Junior Rebels, you know, we would talk and he'd say, well, Rich, you know, want to pass a little bit. And, of course, the quarterbacks were not polished type of quarterbacks and there would be interceptions. And uh, Mark would say, ask me, what do I think about that? And I said, you know, if you like passing, I like passing. I like running as well. Uh, you're going to have interceptions. And uh, interceptions don't bother me. I, I could, I'll could, i bet you any money that you can go back and find uh, a guy like a Johnny Unitas or similar types of quarterbacks with four or five interceptions in a game. Oh, I'm it's sure. It's part of the deal. I'm sure. And I'm I don't sure if think we looked that... At every, uh, I'm sure if we looked at every game, we'd find some yeah, of those. Yeah, I don't think that Matt Barkley should be out of the conversation, even though it does seem, if you read the papers, it seems like now, now the, the, the flavor of the week is Hoyer as a, you know, as as a, bridge, a bridge to the... Uh, to now, me, I, I'd say this. The biggest thing for the Bears, uh, you know, as long as we're... We've touched I on wanted to br- I wanted to bridge into this anyhow. Uh, is that... So, you know, to me, you got to build the team. I don't. The quarterback is really important. Don't get me wrong, but I think maybe from a point of view of a team that was three and thirteen, is we need to put a lot of different pieces together. And if, yeah. if we waste yeah. a yeah, if we waste a decision, let's put it this way, on a QB at this point, it might not. No it's, matter what everybody wants to do, it might not be the thing to do. It it. If you have, you know, go back to the Cade McNown draft. How 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 long did that set this team back? Mm-hmm. If you take a quarterback in the first round and it doesn't pan out, yeah, that's a bad. it's a you know see see Johnny Manziel. Yeah, uh, do you trade? Do you trade a draft pick for Jimmy Garoppolo? Just throwing another sure. flavor of the day out there. Sure. Yeah, I, I, no, I. You know what I would say. Uh, when Jimmy Garoppolo is in the uh, <laughs> Patriots uniform with the Patriots team on the field with him, I say go for it. But in, in reality, if you're Ryan Pace and whoever helps make him uh, helps him make these decisions, your question is: Okay, that's Jimmy Garoppolo on the Patriots. Is Jimmy Garoppolo well, on the Patriots going to be Jimmy Garo- uh, the, same the same Jimmy Garoppolo right. when he's on the Bears? Right, right, right. I, I'd say this: uh, outside of uh, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, and maybe a couple other guys who actually are good enough quarterbacks to make the whole team better offensively, anyway. Uh, what are we talking about here? There's not that many quarterbacks that, that are, are going to have that changer. huge an impact They're at this not point. That much, that, not that many that are game changers right. in the game. And now. there's certainly not going to be a guy that you draft. Yeah. I, but let's put it this way. Quarterback, to me, in the draft, I'm saying, is as, as the same as any other position in the sense that you could get a good one. Yeah, you could get a good one in the first round, but you could get a good run in the third round. You could get a good round, a good one in the sixth or seventh round. You don't know. Sixth round, Tom Brady. I mean, yeah, exactly. Third, third round, Joe Montana. Exactly. Ninth round, Johnny Unitas. Yeah. I, so it's what round was Bart Starr's? Seventeenth. Seventeenth. Happy eighty third birthday, yeah. a day and late. Here, to Bart you know what? Starr. I'm glad you said Bart Starr because for whoever listens to this show, if you're interested, both of you, Bart Starr. <laughs> Bart Starr is nobody. Okay, and was not going to be anybody in the NFL till the coach who saw what he could be came into the situation. The other coaches just, eh, well, yeah, okay, he's good enough to be on the team, but he's a second, third stringer. Yep. All of a sudden, you had a, a, a man come into the situation that saw it 
differently. And yeah. Bart Starr became Bart Starr who, became who we know he became a Hall of Famer. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's interesting too. It, you know, it was kind of funny, and I heard this uh, uh, the other day about uh, trading a draft pick to New England for Jimmy Garoppolo. And uh, Rosenbl- Rosenblum, of all people, who said the Bears have never had any luck trading draft picks for a quarterback in any year ending in seven. 1967, Mike Ditka and a first-round draft pick to the Philadelphia Eagles for Jack and Cannon. Yeah. 1977, a first-round draft pick to the Cleveland Browns for Mike Phipps. Okay. That first-round draft pick, by the way, for Cleveland became Ozzie Newsom. Oh, wow. Good. And what's yeah. even funnier about that, talk about another great coincidence, when Cleveland acquired Mike Phipps from the Miami Dolphins for a first-round draft pick, <laughs> that first-round draft pick became Paul Warfield. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Two Hall of Famers. Yeah. Yeah. There's Mike Phipps' claim to fame. Yeah. And in 1997, the Bears traded a first-round draft pick to Seattle for... Rick Meyer. Rick Meyer. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a iffy... Uh, Put it this way, I think you have to, uh, here's the thing, I think that 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 quarterback that we need is going to be coming to us in the draft if we we do some wise picking, but who that person is or what round of the draft it is, I have no clue what that would be. Yeah, you you have to wonder if if the, the media pressure and the fan pressure are they going to succumb to that and and um, uh, take a quarterback with that third pick? Yeah, I I hope I hope not. Uh, if put it this way, if they think it's the right guy, yeah. uh, and this, this uh, you know, I, I'm not listening to your question well enough. Uh, no, I, I hope they don't uh, succumb to the media and fan pressure. If there's somebody that they is a better player that fits somewhere that we also need. I hope they take that I, player. I hope they, I I hope they fit. I hope they do it on the basis of need. Is that you making noise or is that? Uh, I don't know, ja- uh, but I think that that one was me, maybe. But that's all right. I'm getting all kinds of texts about Marty. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Uh, w- um, what John just said, Marty Zivin uh, about Marty. Marty Zivin uh, was a rather quite a visionary as far as. Uh, Internet broadcasting and and some of the nonsense we did and uh, Marty passed away after a long battle with cancer, and I'm sorry I never had the honor of knowing the man, but I have oh, friends okay. who who knew the man uh, Roger Badish for one who's been a guest here. I wonder if when we had Roger on the show if he might have mentioned Marty because that that name when you mentioned it this morning sounded really familiar. He may have talked about it. Yeah, he may have talked about Marty and um, uh, Marty was uh, in fact when I started uh, uh, many years ago my first foray in uh, doing stuff like this was with uh, uh, Chris Radio Chicago Reading and Information Service and started talking about wanting to do some of this stuff and maybe exploring an internet station. Somebody said. You ought to talk to Marty Zivin. You ought to talk to Marty Zivin and see what it does. And, and, you know, it was one of those things. In fact, uh, uh, the guy I was uh, out to dinner with last night, Mike Sahida, uh, Mike and I had uh, 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 the the chance one time with a mutual friend, uh, Dan Azera, who used to do uh, weekends overnights on the score to do the overnight show with him. And kind of bit the bug. I mean, you know, Mike got the bug bit with him then, and and he said, you know, we could do this, and and it was just, you know, somebody suggested I talk to Marty Zimmon, but you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and I never got around yeah. to doing it. Yeah, you know, but uh, you know, we're sorry to hear it. Marty, Marty put up a long fight uh, against uh, against cancer. In fact, a couple of years ago, you know, everybody said Marty's on his deathbed, and Marty got up off his deathbed. And, and fought some more, and every year there would be the Marty Party to celebrate another uh, another year of uh, another year of life. And unfortunately, he lost that battle just as uh, our former mayor in Norwich, Ron Petisano, lost his battle. Yeah, and you know, as you're, I I thought you were going to maybe bring Ryan up, and since this is a sports show, uh, 
I, I have to tell this story because I, actually I didn't know this story existed until Ron t- had told me a couple times. But Ronnie Opetisano was a, uh, uh, he had, uh, what do you call it, uh, the breathing, uh, uh, what am I thinking of? What, asthma? Uh, asthma, asthma. And uh, when he was 13, he wanted to play football. So I don't know how, but he knew my father some way, and he came and asked my father, he says, you know, Mr. Massaro, he says, I, I want to play football. He said, uh, but my mom won't let me because I have asthma. And uh, my dad said, okay. He says, I'll, I'll give you a, a hand here. And uh, so he went to see Ron's uh, mom, Norma Battisti, and he... Uh, and this is very much my father. There, there's no question that this is true. But I, I, as I say this, I have a hard time picturing anybody in today's world even thinking about doing this. He went to Mrs. Batiste. He said, listen, he says, I'll take Ronnie. He was the coach of the Cardinals, NYA Cardinals. And he says, I'll guarantee you nothing will happen to him. And when Ron told me this story, I'm like, What? And I so, said, but no, not so sounds, much. Well, not so much like, what? That's my father. That's your dad. And uh, that would be your dad. Ronnie played his one year of football. That was his one year ever, and he appreciated it and told me that story on more than one occasion. So, and, and it fits in with our sports theme. It so. fits in, and and he was Ron. Ron was a good guy. He supported the village. I got to know Ron when we both served on the uh, zoning board. Uh, of appeals and uh, Joanne Wheeler was always uh, very proud of him and the fact that he moved on uh, from moved on to uh, the uh, uh, trustees and uh, he'll be missed let's take a break yep You're listening to Armchair Experts from the John Levitt Broadcast Center on Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norge and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Wednesday, January the 11th, the year 2017, with Jim Leon and Rich Massaro. And this is Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich, Illinois. And now back to armchair experts with Jim and Rich. I hate to uh, continue on this down thing, but uh, there was also another uh, um, passing over the uh, uh, over the uh, month of December around the holidays, and actually there was a bit of a Ridgewood connection along there with uh, my friend uh, Terry Thomas, who was the owner of the Chicago Thunder, a very successful minor league uh, uh, football. Uh, Football power won God ten ten championships, three national championships, and uh, certainly there was a Ridgewood connection to there because uh, Guy Narduli and uh, Frank uh, um, Frank Trenadu, right? Frank yeah. Trenadu played for him, yeah. Uh, and both of those guys were Ridgewood graduates, so that was a. Uh, uh, that was another that was another tough one over the holidays yeah if, when you mentioned that one to me it, it hit me because uh, i i think i might have met terry you met terry three, a couple four of times yeah maybe, a few times tops. uh but he he was such a uh, i don't know soft spoken at least at the times i met him he could have been totally different but my my uh version of terry thomas uh and just a gentleman very much so. Very, uh, very much. How would you say, uh, you know, I, I don't know, but uh, just a gentleman is all I would yeah, say. Yeah, very much so. Thank you, Mr. Devena. Uh, very much so. And and you know, we thought about uh, uh, thought about some of the things that uh, um, thought about some of the things that happened. Uh, uh, certainly, there was a Thanks, JD. Uh, uh, certainly, there was. I, I do remember one. Uh, it was a uh, Saturday night. It was a Saturday night game at Hanson on a rainy, rainy night. And as I'm walking out the door, uh, my phone rings, and it was the guy who normally would collect the gate. 
He said, I'm sick. I can't make it. So we got n- nobody to collect the gate. And I'm not sure how many people are going to show up for a game on a pouring night, na- rain, you know, rain and a pouring night. Yeah, yeah. And, and um, I, got to the, I got to Hanson, and I went down in the locker room and waded through about 18 inches of water at the base of the steps. And I went in the locker room, and I found Terry taping Guy Narduli's ankles at okay. that point in time. Okay. I said, uh, by the way, I said, uh, uh, you know, so-and-so called me. He, can't, uh, he couldn't make it tonight, so anybody who shows up is going to get in for free. And Narduli s- sat there for a second. You know, Terry went, well, what else is going to go wrong? And Terry, <laughs> Narduli sat there a second. He says, I got an idea. He said, once the game started, let's lock the gate. And they have to pay five bucks to get out. <laughs> Great idea, guy. <laughs> uh, and and I looked at, and I looked at Terry. I says, you know, that's not bad for a defensive back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> took, well, uh, Terry did uh, a little bit of uh, game action with us. I want to say two or three years ago. A couple of years ago, yeah. when uh, he came up in the booth for uh, for when, Garen maybe? for Garen. Okay. Because uh, Terry was a Holy Cross guy. Right. Holy Cross. So yeah, he came up and okay. Yeah. Kibitzed with us a little bit upstairs. Sure. So we had a uh, nice man. Nice I, man. I uh, I did, you know, obviously didn't see him a whole lot, uh, but what I did see, I liked, and um, from my point of view, he'll be missed. Yeah, we had a good laugh. Uh, we always had a good laugh. There was a game. Uh, there was a Saturday night game at uh, at Hanson, and uh, Arthur Arthur Brooks and I pulled into the back, pulled into the parking lot at about six fifty eight and came running through the back gate. And, of course, there's Terry standing right by the back gate looking at his watch. And he goes, nice of you two to stop by. And I looked at him, and I said, hey, we're coming from Hawthorne. I hit the trifecta on the last race. I wasn't leaving without collecting my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. And and from that point, from that point on, from that point on, if I showed up at – for a seven o'clock game, if I showed up at six thirty-two, it was what you had a trifecta. <laughs> if I showed up early, it was you lost all your money. <laughs> From hey, hey, Jim, hey, I and, uh, God bless the people that we talked about, uh, Ron and Terry and uh, and I, Marty and Marty. But uh, you know what? I, I there's a few things I have on my mind. Good. And let's I, get started. I don't know if we. Did we did we end our conversation about the Bears? I well, we I think some. the Bears. I think the the issue with the Bears is is we we had kind of gotten to that point. Are it, are they going to be pressured into taking if they keep that third round pick? And I think if they trade it, this you know they're they're just going to get blasted left and right. You, you know, I don't think they'll trade it if though. they trade down. Trade down. I yeah. See. yeah. You know, if they trade down, I think they might get blasted left and right. I don't think they're going to trade the draft pick. If they take a quarterback, I guess I wouldn't be surprised. If they don't take a quarterback, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. As long as they, f- as long as you fill a need, and if you're drafting in the top five, you better get somebody who's going to be an impact player and going to be an impact player right from the beginning. I don't want to hear about another project. Yeah. You know. And speaking of quarterbacks, Jim, uh, I thought that uh, Deshaun Watson uh, was much better Impressed uh, me. this mm. year than what I saw him last year. Impressed and me. I, I did read he he, uh, he wanted to make this clear. I read an article, I think, in yesterday's paper where he said, listen, I can run, but I'm a quarterback. He said, you know, throwing is what I do. I, you know, if I have to escape, I can do that. And I'm a pretty good runner, but I'm a I'm a quarter. I, you know, he wanted wants that to everybody he wants to everybody realize. To remember, okay, he's a quarter, I'm not a runner yeah. who's also the quarterback. I'm a quarterback who can run, which I sort of liked. He I, I liked the fact that he was, you know, putting emphasis on that point. I think, and and I'll say it like this: for a black quarterback, I even today, and I'm not, you know, this is not racism or anything like that. But that is still an issue, and it's an important one for a guy who's black and wants to be an NFL quarterback. He's got to be seen as a quarterback first, not a running quarterback. Yeah. Not every not everybody is um, Michael Vick. 
No, or, or and they or, shouldn't be. Or, I mean, uh, Michael Vick shouldn't have been Michael Vick. Michael Vick shouldn't have been more than it helped in RG3. Right. His running, that's really brought, I think it'll be an early end to his career. Yeah, I think you're right. You know, I think it'll be an early end to his career because they tried to exploit the running first, and he just got beat up, yeah. something fierce. Yeah, he did. You know. Uh, I I think I think um, uh, Watson would be a great choice uh, for any team. Sure. I don't know if he's uh, you know you've got two teams in front of the in front of the Bears. Well, all three teams really have a need for a quarterback. Uh, uh, Cleveland and San Cle- Francisco. Cleveland and San Francisco. Why I tell you, you know not to stomp on anybody when they're down, but I'm going to do it anyway. When you Brent mentioned San Francisco, and it's not so much the 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 coach that I'm talking about. But when Chip Kelly came to the Eagles, okay, and they had a little success right out of the gate. Yeah. Oh, the Raiders, oh, my God, this guy's going to revolutionize the way the NFL plays the game. Well, How'd that work I'll out tell you, when, when the 49ers came with the revolutionary to uh, Soldier Field this year and had like four yards passing, <laughs> that did sort of revolutionize the game in my mind. Yeah, I, didn't I, he? I don't did, know he, had if, more inter, he had more sacks than yards passing? I, something some, like something that. Something like that? I, th- I think you'd have to go back to the days when uh, you know they'd flip the ball to Bronco Nagurski and let him throw it <laughs> to have less than four <laughs> yards passing. So, what, what I had to laugh about after the uh, after the season was over and we start to get the traditional uh, uh, Black Monday uh, uh, press conferences and the uh, and the general manager in Buffalo going oh, I didn't know he was going to get fit Rex was going to get fired <laughs> oh my god we were having we were having our normal Monday morning conference call and Rex asked to speak to the owner and I got off the phone and the owner came into my office and said you won't be working with Rex anymore <laughs> And then the press started. Then the press started to say, "Well, what exactly do you do here?" <laughs> what's yeah? What's your job? <laughs> and the uh. and the funniest and and I think what was even funnier was the, was the press conference in San Francisco on that on that uh, on that Monday with the owner of the team and. <laughs> He felt he says this these firings were necessary to our organization. <laughs> Somebody asked him and said, Well, if they were necessary for the organization, why are you still here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I own the team. <laughs> I, that, he said, Well, what makes you think you're capable of making a decision? And you'd have to ask that question too. You know yeah. I I I Wow, that that's as one guy who's a regular caller on the score would say, he said, 49ers, hot garbage. <laughs> yeah. Hot garbage. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I have to ask your opinion on this. I, I noticed now, because I, I actually this year, even though they're a 500 club, I find the Bulls, as you know, to be a little fascinating. I, I do too. I, uh, I You never know who's, who's and, which team is showing up. Yeah. You know what, though? I think Gar Pax... Well, the jury's going to be out, but they may have done something intelligent here. I noticed that within the last couple of weeks, Rajan Rondo has been uh, benched yeah. by Hoiberg. And I'm thinking, uh, wait a minute. No. You know, remember the big to-do when they signed both him and Wade? Okay, yeah. Why are they signing these guys? Yeah. Did they possibly do something intelligent here where they could I, maybe get a, a, a payoff at it, trade deadline it, time? It get, may uh, have been you know. it may have been the Midas touch in reverse. Yeah. Uh I don't think it was intended to to do that. I'm not sure about that, Jim. I'm not sure you know, I, I'm not sure if they intended to do that. They thought they were doing the best thing for the team. Um and Rondo did not turn out. Rondo was turning into his normal Rondo self. And we'll talk about your buddy Derek Rose in a minute here, because um, I know you want to talk about him. Yeah, I know. Um, but I, I, I find him, I find him a fascinating team. I kind of wonder. I, although now that you mention it, I kind of wondered when they got um, uh, Michael Carter Williams mm-hmm. if Rondo was going to get shuffled. To the, I did kind of have that thought in my mind. But let me your impression because I haven't really seen them play that much, and all I know is is what I read or once in a while I will hear the game. I'll I'll try to catch him at least on WGN. <laughs> but is uh, 
I, my impression is not so much that Rondo is playing poorly, but it, it see, see I, that's why I think maybe this was planned out. You know, this whole thing where Rondo threw the ball at Boylan, and yeah. that was a big, big deal. I thought it was a towel. I don't think it's a very big deal at all. I, I thought it was a towel. A uh, towel. I'm sorry. Towel. Yeah. Threw a towel. Wow, that's even. Oh, but, my God. Uh, yeah. That that should be uh, yeah. that suspension should, or something. That well, he got he did get suspended by the team for a game. Yeah, that uh, should that should be an arrest. Actually. I think <laughs> this is all like a sort of a red herring, Jim. I I I, I don't know that if Rajan Rondo was ever meant to be to finish out this season with the Bulls, and I'm not sure if Dwayne Wade is meant to finish uh, the season I'm, with the Bulls either. Honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of wondering about that. If they can pull a deal, uh, and I mean, I keep hearing talk about, uh, I've heard some talk about, well, Wade going to Cleveland. I wouldn't, you know. You know, I found it, I, by the way, I found it interesting on the deal that uh, uh, Cleveland uh, um, Cleveland made to get uh, Kyle Korver. At one they point. They sent uh, Dunleavy. Yeah, they sent Dunleavy. They said at one point in time in Korver's career, I guess when he was drafted, who drafted him first? Uh, I think he was with... Uh, was it New Jersey? Was it the Nets? Might have been Philadelphia. Philadelphia traded him, traded his rights to the Nets for $125,000. They, they used the $125,000 to fund their summer league team. And with the rest, they bought a copier. <laughs> so oh, Kyle Carver was traded for a copier. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Carver was traded for a Xerox machine. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, uh, I, I just, uh, well, first off, I, I'd say both Rondo and Wade are would be perfect fits for contending teams. Yeah. Because I, what if you, I If you can have, put up with Rondo's nonsense. I, you know, I, when you listen to people talk, I think he's more of a guy who, you know, the big thing with Rondo is he has a certain way he thinks the game should be played. Right. And that's right. what he wants to do. And that's do. what he wants to do. If he's in the right setting, that's fine. Yeah. If he's not, then it could be a problem. But uh, put it this way, for a half a year, in a, if if you put him with a team that's contending, okay, so he's sort of like you know, an old racehorse that smells the the roses or whatever, he could... Uh, I don't think that's a it's a problem because I think he could still play, and Dwayne Wade is not a great play anymore, but he's still a very good player. Still a very good player, and you get those nights. Yeah, yeah. When uh, uh, you know, even though there's a, an awful lot of minutes on those legs, mm -hmm. you still get those nights where Dwayne finds the range and and is still. Still, oh, for sure, super ball player. Yeah, I mean he's an excellent player, and he knows how to play the game. And he knows uh, how to play the game the right way. Yeah, too. he does. You know, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm just curious. You guys know something I don't know about what's going on with our buddy Derek? Oh, Derek didn't show up for a game. Oh, he didn't show up for a game. He didn't show up. He was uh, he was a ball, and um, uh, they don't know what the. Uh, they don't know what the issue was. They know he was upset because he got benched. And uh, um, they don't know what the story is. And uh, Phil is nowhere to be found to find the explain. So explain that. So uh, Jeff Hornacek had to, you know, step in, step in and take the uh, take the questions. And it was like, well, I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know where he is. I don't know what it is. Uh, but he's apparently all right, and apparently he's. I guess he came back to Chicago, so I don't know what the deal, uh, what the deal is. Huh? But uh, he's. Uh, if he was, uh, uh, you know, he talked about being earlier in the year. He talked about being very content in New York, and that they appreciated him. Uh, but I guess uh, you know, trying to say all the right things, so he thinks he can get the max contract that. In his mind, he believes he's due, but he's not really playing to that point. Now you got to wonder if he's going to make it to the end of the season. Uh, well, I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I, I'd say this. I think he blew the max contract a long time ago, and he's nothing oh, is happening. Nothing is happening in New York to change that at all. No, no. It's whether he uh, whether he comes to every game or not, it's still not changing. It's still not changing. I think uh, you know he's delusional. 
Uh, you know what I can never figure out, though, Jim? And this is, and I can't even guess at it. You hear, I uh, was watching the Knicks play the uh, Bucks. Uh, I don't know which day it was. It was a few days ago. And the Bucks were at that, you know, the, to the point that I watched the game because uh, I didn't watch the whole thing. The Bucks were just killing them. But the announcers were making the comments to the point of, you know, Rose and uh, Noah, they, they're just guys who like to win and they're this and that. But I'm thinking to myself, what the hell? Now, Derek Rose is problematic for a long time now. <laughs> you know, maybe not when he first started with the Bulls, but then after, you know, the last four years, let's just say, to, to put a number on it, very problematic is where his head is at. But Joakim Noah was a solid solid guy yeah and uh the announcers did make a point that you know what he is just sort of beat up and has continued to be beat up and he just cannot do the things that when he was at his best that he could do i mean he's taken a pounding over the years uh and i I didn't realize he's in the league for probably better than 10 years now isn't he at Pretty least, sure. at least, it might it might be longer than that. But where uh, did the jo- uh, uh, I'll put it like this: you can be beat up, and I, I think he's still trying. But I, I never thought of him as a prima donna. But where did hell? The, where did he start to become a prima donna? I, I, honestly, I don't know. I never I never viewed him as that. I always viewed him as this guy who was always. Uh, um, you know, just like you said, the guy who'd come out do the workmanlike effort. And uh, and that would be uh, that's that's what you would expect from him. Right, right. That's what you would expect from but him. But I think his thinking has changed in a in a not in not a good way. I mean, if he's aligning himself with Derek Rose, they're buddies, and he thinks that Derek is okay, then to me something's wrong with Joakim. That's what I'm saying, I guess. And just looking from the last game they played, uh, uh, Noah only played uh, the last game the. Uh, uh, Nick's played. No, only played uh, uh, seventeen minutes. Four points. Noah. Oh, that's yeah. That seventeen surprise me. At all. Seventeen. Ten boards. Yeah. No. No. He'll give you. You know. Ten boards, but only uh, ten boards, but only seventeen minutes. Uh. Uh. He was a uh, uh, first round draft pick in the two thousand and seven draft. Okay, so that's ten years. Ten years. He's in his tenth season. Jim, uh, well, I, 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 and I, and I mean, really, as I look, uh, just as I as I look back, uh, uh, I mean, uh, early on in his career, he averaged, you know, first year twenty minutes a game, then twenty four, then thirty, thirty two, thirty, thirty six, thirty five. Obviously, that was uh, uh, Tibbs' years. Then thirty, twenty one, as injury started to to take its toll, and then twenty two minutes. He's averaging twenty two minutes a game this year. Okay. Think of this, uh, 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 you know, even though Noah, uh, his time on courts has gone down, but guys like Joakim Noah or Taj Gibson would be a great example are guys that, uh, now think of who they played for. They, they both played for Tom Thibodeau, who's a very defensive-minded coach. They both played for Fred Hoiberg, whose style, I'm sure Fred Hoiberg doesn't ignore defense, but, you know, he's more into the let's, let's do the three-ball thing. Yeah. And the, those guys, though, and uh, you know now uh, Noah has moved on, and Jeff Hornacek is his coach. And I'm not sure what Jeff Hornacek's uh, persona is as far as the type of game they like to play. But those guys could fit uh, whatever style, whatever type of team you want, because the, what they bring is needed on any team, regardless <laughs> of the style. At at, they, at at some point during the game. Right. They they you know which is solid defense and just you know go to work on the board. Right. Uh, every right. team regardless of whether you're a three-point shooting team or right. a running run and gun type of team uh needs that type of player. Right. Irregardless. So those guys can fit into any situation uh possible. And I I'm bringing that up because it's something I I just thought about this over the last couple of days. It's I, it fits into the conversation a little bit, but uh, just something I wanted to bring out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because I started to think, Jim, why is a guy like Todd Gibson? I mean, he, he was great with Thibodeau. He's great with Hoiberg. I mean, he's just a team guy. But his game lends itself 
to being a team guy. Because he can fit in in any role in you any, put. Any in any role. role. Right. And a guy like, a, say, a, a Derrick Rose, whether you like him or don't like him, it, it's it's not the same deal for that guy. Okay? He doesn't... He's he, not going to be in a three-point shooting offense he's the a, same he, way he, as he's going to be in a... Uh, he's a he's a one-dimensional player. Yeah. And the dimension is whatever I want to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, it, it's... Very much so. You're you right. know, You know, and it's interesting... Uh, it's it's interesting the last few games, with the exception of the other night, when uh, um, Jimmy Bucket had the flu. Yeah, but man, he was like dominant. Yeah, Butler was. Yeah, yeah. you know what was it? Two games in a row, fifty, fifty plus. I know at least one game fifty. Plus. I think it was two games in a row, fifty, and the one after that he threw in thirty-eight. Yeah, something like that, thirty-eight or thirty-nine. So man, you haven't seen anybody take over a game like that since you know since Michael. Yeah, I know that's that's the big talk uh, at this point. You know, uh, in in is this is this the is this the direction that they're going to go? And let's we'll just you know, it's Jimmy's it's Jimmy's team now. Let him do it. And and you know he's it sounds like he's getting some encouragement from Dwayne Wade, like go out and win. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Which is fine. Yeah. I think Wade has been brought in to a certain, you know, to a part of it is Wade has been brought in for his, quote, to mentor, that, uh, to mentor his, quote, senior leadership. Yeah. Uh, his experience for all these years in the league. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, maybe his presence on the floor or his presence even with the team makes, it, you, makes him a better ball player. I've really uh, come to have a respect for Dwayne Wade. Uh, I, You know, when he first came, uh, Jim Kelly, who we have coffee with in the morning, is a real opinionated. And, it'll, and a lot of times Jim's right. But he said, oh, you know, Wade will be running the team. I think I've even said that. But, you know, Dwayne Wade has been very honest. He said, you know, at one point in my career in Miami, I did try to step into these situations. And... Uh, be a voice for the uh, uh, for management and whatnot. Uh, you know, lend my voice to to the conversation. But he, at, at you know, they asked him the other day about Rondo, and he said, you know, hey, you know, we're all with Rondo. You know, he's he's good with us. But that's those are management decisions, and I'm not involved in that. So they're going to do whatever they do for the reasons they they think are right. And but hey, don't ask me because I don't have a voice in it. And I just appreciate his candor about that. That's right. You that's, and you know what? That's that's the way it should be. Yeah, it is. That's the way it should be. I go back to think about that BS with the White Sox during spring training with the Adam LaRoche, and how that got really probably set the cancer on the team for the year. Yeah. Yeah, I think it did set the uh, pace for the year. Yeah. And it certainly set the pace for Chris Sale to be run out of town because everybody was tired of his nonsense. Yeah, after that because he was the he was the one with the biggest mouth, I think, during spring training. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Now, well, the uh, interesting thing is about that. I uh, there was a, there was a gentleman by the name of Chris Johnson that plays sixteen inch softball. Called we call him Powder. One of the best hitters in the game, and what I but Powder is very uh, how would you put it? He's not everybody's cup of tea, and I've often thought to myself, okay, if Powder was on my team, I would have no problem with Powder because first off, I'm a lot older than the guys who play, and I've heard I'm not going to say I've heard it all, but I've heard a lot of it, and. What it, what he has to say doesn't bother me because I don't think he's really intending to mean anything uh, negative. But sometimes he ends up to be that way. But that wouldn't bother me. I mean, I just let it roll off my back. But the question is, how does that affect younger other players? Does it start to color their attitudes? Does it? Does do some of them just say, okay, this guy's my teammate, but I really can't stand him, so. You know, because you want that camaraderie, but, you know, he doesn't get it because just don't like him, okay? Uh, when you say Chris Sale, Chris Sale, outstanding talent. I think on a lot of clubs, he could say whatever, uh, 
If he was on the battling A's, he could say whatever oh. the heck he wants. That yeah. wouldn't bother them wouldn't at all. Wouldn't bother him any of them you know? at all. He, he would have uh, fit right in in that era. But if you have a club that's not strong, and what I'm saying, it's not strong on the field, and usually if you're not strong in the field, you're not, you're strong not that the, strong in the you're, clubhouse You're not either. strong in the clubhouse, no. Uh, that can be a problem. And uh, so in, in that sense, I, me personally, I'll never have a problem with Chris Sale. I have, didn't have a problem with him saying what he had to say about the Adam LaRoche thing. No problem with anything. He's just a, he's a superstar pitcher, in my opinion. But you know what? He might not be the best guy to be in the Sox he, clubhouse. He, he, he doesn't know. He probably was not, would not be the best guy in the Sox clubhouse, and it'll be interesting to see. What he does with Boston this year? It'll be great with Boston, yeah, because they won't. They're not going right. to care. They're, All right, they're stronger well, than that. Well, we do have. Uh, we do have. Uh, I, I did see <laughs> one of my first um, signs of spring. Those magic words, pitchers and catchers report in February. February fourteenth. February fourteenth. Both teams report. Pitchers and catchers report both on February. I'm looking forward to it, as I'm usual. Look, I'm looking forward to another baseball season yeah. to see what happens. We love baseball. We should have the um, uh, Hall of Fame vote coming out pretty soon, which would be which would be interesting, yeah, the final. Know, right about, but who's the big runner? Uh, uh, runner? I think right now, uh, I think right now from the votes that have been announced, because a lot of people have made, themselves, made their votes public, which they're going to be required to do, mm-hmm. I think, in a couple of years. I wish they would. Uh, I think, think uh, I think uh, uh, Tim Raines was one name I heard, and I can't remember who else. But we'll see. We'll see about that. It was interesting. <laughs> it was interesting when you brought up a couple of names in our text back and forth. As you get your little uh, uh, name, fla- you know, flashes of baseball players from the fifties. Yeah. Um, and it was interesting looking at uh, the minor league records, at least on one guy, the guy that went to. Um, uh, the guy that wound up being traded in a deal for Luz Gizes after that whole thing started. Bill Renna. Bill Renna. That we, I think we need to. Uh, uh, we may need to look at a minor league Hall of Fame somewhere along the way. I may need to. So they ha- They must have one. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I, I can't see them not having. I one. can't see them not having one. But it would be interesting to look at some of it. And see, guys who never quite made it but had a great career in the minor leagues, or had a great career in the minor leagues and went on and had. Equally good career in the major league. That's true. Uh, so. uh, you, you know, it's, it's boy, when you start to talk about stuff like that, I could talk all day uh, on, on this subject and, and, and it, with the, in, uh, you know, and different types of things. Uh, but I was going to say, uh, going back to the Hall of Fame deal, no, the Major League Hall of Fame, uh, I find it interesting. Now, the, uh, in the Sun-Times, the USA Today, has been running. Uh, they had uh, not uh, Banny Ramirez last week, Kurt Schilling, Yvonne Rodriguez, uh, who was the uh, Trevor Hoffman, and they had somebody. They, there was like five or six guys I read about who are on the ballot, <clears throat> and they give the the pluses and minuses. And uh, a couple things stood out to me when I, I saw Yvonne Rodriguez. You know, the pluses are pretty pretty darn obvious and that you know gave some minuses but I, I said to myself I think Ivan Rodriguez in my you know my little universe baseball universe is one of the two top catchers I've ever seen in the game probably Johnny, Johnny Bench yeah. and Rodriguez are the yeah. two yeah. favorites yeah. okay yeah so to me this guy you don't say negative he's a shoe in as far as I'm yeah. concerned yeah but there are some negatives in today's uh uh, game, you know, he's a guy who they think use steroids, but you know, prior to it being not legal or whatever, you know, and I don't even care about this. I'm sick of the steroid talk. For number well, one. I think I I think a lot of people view the fact that if Bud Selleck's going into the Hall of Fame, nobody should be talking about steroids. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but Kurt Kurt Schilling, Kurt Schilling uh, has talked himself out has, of the Hall of Fame. You know, and, but here's the thing. So what? How do you talk? You know what? I don't care what Kurt Schilling has said, whether I, I agree with it or I not. I know, I know. But he, it, his uh, body of work on the field. I'm not saying he's a 100 percent shoo-in, but at some point, Kurt Schilling needs to be in the need, Hall of Fame. Need be, needs to be considered. But unfortunately, in this day and age, you're going to be graded on everything you do. Do you realize you have a bunch of drunken? 
a wife exactly. beating uh, sports writers exactly. who are so sanctimonious now that they're going to look at these ball players and say, "Do you re- hey, Babe Ruth wouldn't even be in the Hall of Fame today if these guys were the ones who were voting. Ty Cobb. I mean, you'd, you'd have to, who the heck could be in? That's I right. don't think anybody would be Nobody in. Nobody would be in if that's the case. But that's, that's and, and one guy sent his, sent a, admitted he sent a blank ballot in, and he did it because, well, if they put Bud Sulligan in the Hall of Fame, why should I vote for anybody? Well, I, I don't know. I, well, that's, that's, another, that's another discussion for another time. You know time. what? I've I, I got to tell you, Jim, and another discussion, but just real quick. Anytime you talk about a commissioner, baseball exec of any kind, I have no real opinion because – I don't have my own criteria for judging those people. So, yeah, you want to put them in, knock your socks off. Yeah. I mean, the man was in the game for a long time. He was in the game for a long time. I think, though, the, there there's issues that everybody looks at him from a uh, standpoint, maybe questionable ethics. He was commissioner while essentially he still was a team owner. Uh, he engineered the, um, the move of... Uh, uh, of uh, the Expos out of Montreal. He made sure Luria got to buy a franchise, and now Luria says he'll sell the Marlins for like a billion dollars when they're worth about $400 million less. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, a, a lot of, just a lot of BS, really. That's what it comes to. But yeah. anyhow, we'll, talk, we'll continue our BS in a couple of weeks. Speaking of BS... Uh, we'll continue our BS in a couple of weeks and uh, get together and talk about whatever else is rattling around in our minds. Yeah. yeah. Anything on your mind there, uh, Doctor? You're just shaking your head. No. no. Yeah, well, this guy, here's a guy who looks like he just went, uh, actually, he reminds me of Gene Fulmer after he got out of the <laughs> ring with Sugar Ray Robinson. You know what? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> stay off stay off of ladders and stay out of bars. Okay. All right. All right. Let's wrap it up. We're going to get out of here. A lot of fun, as always, uh, just to rattle around and talk about whatever comes out of our mouths. And we don't plan anything, and obviously we prove it Sure. every time we do it. So until the next time, we are out of here, and we are taillights. You have been listening to Armchair Experts from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on Wednesday, January the 11th, the year 2017 on Jack FM 89.7, WRHS FM Norge, and the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network with Jim Leon and Rich Massaro. This broadcast was directed by John DeVita, and our special thanks to radio station manager Kevin Zeflick of WRHS-FM Norwich, and executive producer of Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network, Mr. John Chaconda. This broadcast was pre-recorded on Tuesday, January the 10th, the year 2017. Until next time, thanks friends for listening, and have a great day. And this is Jack FM 89.7 WRHS FM Norwich, Illinois.